Hello everyone, this is James Nussbaumer, and this video is mainly for the people who have requested uh, this message, but also for you people watching that don't know me. I am the author of The Master of Everything, a story of mankind in the world of illusion that we call life. I call it a spiritual and inspirational manifesto to a better life, and that's kind of what this blog is about. Well, not kind of, that is what it's about. Many of you have, I've gotten so many wonderful messages from Facebook and Twitter mostly and private emails and they wanted to know more in a, one person said, in a nutshell, can you write a little blog or give us a little message on what it was like and writing your book from prison and all that. And I only have a few minutes to say this. We, we put together something here. When I say we, I always pass, uh, things on to my editor, Carol, who I love so much, who lives in Sarasota, Florida, to make sure that, uh, you know, we have everything exactly right, because I want to make sure that I'm not doing anything to offend anyone and so forth. But anyways, really, in a nutshell, uh, how everything happened, let's put it this way. If you want to put your, um, your mindfulness on, your mental hat on right now, you know, a business owner who says he or she has never even for an instant doubted or feared if he was on the right path is not being honest at all. Even entrepreneurs with a burning passion in their guts and bulldog persistence have quitting days, says author Azriella Jaffe. And you know what? I can surely vouch for Azriella, what she's saying there. And Azrael, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your first name uh, incorrectly, and I do apologize. I gave it my best, but I surely can vouch for what she's saying. And, and you know, we at all times question our natural abundance, our natural ability, and our commitment, but we do seem to know how to rise above when we need to, don't we? Yes, we do. Let's talk about commitment. I'd written this book from prison, by hand, in composition journals. That was the climb. That's how I, you know, the, the climb was how I would land a publisher. But, but the writing is what kept me climbing. But the climb was towards looking at 10 years of prison in the beginning years. Oh, my God. Ten, it was like looking up through the, from hell, looking up to light. How can I get up there? How can I get to the light? Writing was my climb. It was the climb that I had to take. How would I land a publisher were my thoughts. So that became the climb out of hell that I had to make, let alone trying to shake those hellish thoughts that were pulling at me and trying its best to pull me back down into hell, you know, and to keep me from climbing any higher toward the light. I knew I had to reach uh, certain plateaus and then relax. I would, I would see... Uh, plateaus, like little shelves sticking out, you know, on my way up there. And I knew I had to reach and then relax on what I noticed to be these narrow shelves, which I called plateaus. These frail shelves, like little rock shelves sticking off the side of a, of a cave, but climbing upwards. I was down in a hole, the, the rabbit hole of the prison system. And I was trying, clawing my way up. These frail shelves I had to reach one at a time. And I'd sit and rest on a certain plateau, careful not to let my legs dangle too much. And I'd give thanks and bask in my inner divine self that I made it at least up this far to that plateau with what was going on with my writing, which was getting me through the time in prison. And I sat there often with tears in my eyes, some happy, some sad. But I'd anxiously rest at each plateau for a while, wholeheartedly knowing I still had a hell of a climb ahead of me. I always anticipated my inner voice calling me, sometimes lovingly shouting to me, shouting at me, kind of like a parent would, like your mom or dad would, urging me to start climbing again. When the final chapter was nearing its completion in this book, when the final chapter was nearing its end from the chaotic and volatile and mostly often violent din of the cell block, a blissful feeling continued to flow through me. I knew I was going to miss this project. 
I was going to miss it, but I was sad too because I could not get it to mature beyond the handwritten stage due to no computer usage whatsoever in this backwoods prison system. My only other resource was not only a resource at all, but was available if I wished to stand in line to use the ancient poor quality prison typewriter. Need I say, not nearly up to a publisher's standards. How would I get a publisher to finally get this book published? This was a feeling like, like not being able to send your cherished kid off to college. You know, the one in the family, the kid who, your, your child who desperately desired to change the world. Let's talk about willingness. But regardless, my words did mature into book form, but it was only handwritten into a growing pile of journals. This would be fine for the time being. Help would be on its way in due time was a voice inside me that was gently assuring me that things would be okay. As the journals, handwritten journals, which was my equivalent to computer entry, sat in the bottom of my footlocker while I continued to diligently climb to the next plateau. There is where I'd write book number two, the sequel to this. But I wasn't done climbing yet. That same loving voice encouraged me to keep writing. Another plateau was reached and a third book was launched in my mind. Now as I write, and I keep on writing, I must say that the climb out of hell was worth it. I never gave up in these three wonderful books on manifesting one's true destiny are now in the hands of a magnificent, loving publisher, Ozark Mountain Publishing Company. This is the pilot, and book two is on its way out, which I'll be announcing at the Transformation Conference in April. And book three is, uh, will be on uh, about six months later, will be out. They're all being edited and published right now. This may seem all too simple, but it really all starts on the first step. That's where I started my climb, on the first step. Now I'm a free man after eight long, horrific years in a state prison. Let me quickly add that anyone can rise above adversity. And if you're needing a little help in doing so, and you want to check into some further avenues for you, take a look at my website that's in the description box at this YouTube video, uh, jamesnussbomber.com. It will take you to my Real Abundance page and see what you find there and, and go from there. Hey, everyone, thank you for listening to me. And in a nutshell, I hope that answers some of your questions, the ones that asked for it. And if you haven't asked a question and you're just – looking at this story for now. I hope maybe it makes sense to you. Thanks again. God bless you.